It's Christmas Eve, the best night of the holidays when our favorite family comes over for our annual get together. Oh, here they are. Church must be over. Our friends arrive once again at 26 Air Crescent bringing gifts, laughter, and the best company that we could ask for. We catch up on life and share our favorite stories from previous years. There is never a dull moment on this night, and the spread is always top notch. Father Michael is never able to join, but he always calls to send his wishes, and he's home just in time to help clean up. But we make sure to save him a couple pieces of the greatest appetizer of all time, asparagus rolls, a staple among many others of our beloved tradition. We've been doing this now for 20 years, and I'm at a point um, where I can't think of us not doing it. Um, it's just something that I look forward to every year. Our families growing up together, like, that was the best day of the year. I honestly think that was the day I looked the most forward to all year long. For me, I mean, I enjoy the food and the wine, but for me, it's just, I don't know, it's the people thing. It's watching everyone just pick up, as you said, pick up where they left off and everybody just laughs and we have fun. And Kicking back with people I really like to be with. And it was nice because everybody was the same age. You know, Marilyn and I were the same age. You and the boys were the same age. Sarah and Alex were the same age. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it was just like this kind of more family than family. They're, my best memories are just like of times when I laughed so hard with Alex. But like, a, like I, my tummy hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but it used to be just like a short little cocktail hour. So now it's turned into a whole evening. Now it's a whole dinner. Um, We've broadened it to be like all the different members of the family. Yeah, and it was it was a good time, um, but yeah, but she <laughs> but, always but didn't live up to the hype. Well, no, because like you you said like all I've been told was like the high points of the previous fifteen years, right? <laughs> so I was like I was measuring it against like the best moments of the previous fifteen years, of which there were many. Thinking about these memories had me asking questions about the origins of our tradition. When did we actually start doing it? And how did it come about? I think we have to trace our story further back to the beginnings of the friendship between Sharon and Marilyn. Well, really what sure. happened was, of course, Peter and Michael being twins, I remember saying to your dad, I said, this is still traditional to wear white. And he said, no, you don't have to. In the end, I did get them two white outfits. The next thing I know, the next Sunday, this pregnant woman approaches me and says, I'm Sharon Fleming, Michael's wife, and I have two white blankets that I got given when Sarah was born. Would you like to borrow them? So I said, sure. And then after that, I think we were both at a stage in our life where we were both exploring our faith. And we went on, I think it was Curcio, and there was Bible studies, and we'd always get talking, and, and I don't know, we became friends through that because we were both at the same stage. Like, she, she basically went to church because her husband was a priest, mm -hmm. and I was just sort of returning to church after years of not being there, not sure why, <laughs> why I was there. And that's where our friendship started. But I do remember she proposed it to me as we're both on our own on Christmas Eve because Michael's working and you don't have a spouse anymore, so why don't we get together? And so I think that's how it really got started. It was just so we wouldn't be alone on Christmas Eve. Sometimes mom was here, my mom, your grandmother. And we always went to the 7 o'clock service at St. John the Divine. And then afterwards we'd come over and then eventually your family went to St. Peter's, mm -hmm. but we still did it. And then it just kind of morphed and it got more, a bit more elaborate. And then we turned it into a, I said it was going to be a cocktail party for you kids. I remember the feeling of like anticipating being excited, particularly when we went to different churches. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I remember when we would be at church together and then come home, it was like not as exciting. Mm -hmm. But when we hadn't been together, we'd be at separate churches and we would be afraid. Like I remember being worried, like will we arrive at the same time? What will happen? Like, will we know? Yeah. I was like very concerned with the timing of it all. Yeah. Um, and so I remember yeah. kind of being excited. And I also remember mom like racing home and being stressed that she didn't have enough food when she always had like literally 20,000 times more food than necessary. Well, 
I was working. I had two young kids and a husband who was extremely busy at Christmas time. And I was busy. I mean, I had a big job. And I had to work Christmas Eve day. So if Christmas was during the week, I had to work Christmas Eve day, didn't get home until three o'clock. Generally, nothing was ready. I'm busy trying to get things literally made. I'm trying to get dinner ready because we always had dinner before we went to church, get you guys bundled into it because dad had gone off to the service, get you guys into the car to church, home from church, and then everybody came 15 minutes later and it all had to be ready. Okay, so I remember um, the one year where we thought it would be funny to give you a potato as your gift. I'm sure Mike talked about it, but it basically that we, we wrote up a little thing about how we'd given, you know, a donation on your behalf to charity and that you were so generous <laughs> that we really, really applauded you for that, you know, spirit and, and not being bitter or any anything else. But I think you were just mostly confused. But I thought it was hilarious, right? So I was so excited for you to open it. I really remember you getting a pillow. I remember you getting a pillow. Oh my God, this pillow. This is what I've always wanted. Oh, no. I was so excited. But you were legitimately excited about that pillow. Um, I remember the year Peter came with the Kim Jong-un haircut. That was more recent. <laughs> the other ones I remember is, yeah, the year you got the frying pan cover thing from my mom. And you were like, thank you for this. Because you did not know what it was. I don't know what it was there was some item that we really peter and i really really wanted that year and we're like we're gonna get it on boxing day but then our friend had told us i think that you know you like the stores open at six you have to be there like right away or you're not gonna get it so like okay okay let's do this uh let's show up before everyone else let's go for 3 a.m and line up well we got there at 3 a.m and there's already tons of people in line but I think we were probably still like the first hundred or something. And uh, for that year on, for like five years, I think we went like, we'd go at like midnight or one. And like, it was so cold. So like my dad came one year, he was in this parka and we're taking shifts out in line and going back to the car. And then Best Buy and Future Shop were side by side. So some people would wait in the Future Shop, some in the Best Buy, and we'd like coordinate what was going on. So it was absolutely ridiculous. And then the one year we worked there, um, so that wasn't too bad. So we just sent my mom to come and get the stuff, you know? But you know, the other thing I always remember about these evenings is the sisters, Alexandra and Sarah, just laughing and yeah. laughing and laughing. Yeah. And then usually you guys would get going too as part of it. So, and uh, Sharon talks about the fact that because your dad was never here for years because he was at church. Mm. And we would sit and talk, and, and Sarah and Alex, we used to all be down in the room, but when you got older, you guys would go down in the basement and have your beers. Yep. And then Alex and Sarah would go up to her room and wrap presents. Well, we all remember the sad, the sad Christmas, the sad Christmas Eve when Cinna died. I think everyone's probably mentioned that. It'd be hard not to remember that. The best year was the year, this is how I remember it. That was the the famous incident. <laughs> Whenever I think of what we do at Christmas Eve, I often think of that night with Cinna. So Sarah and I were upstairs and we got this really bright idea that we were going to take a picture of a teen heartthrob. Now Sarah was telling me it was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. In my head it was Devin Sawa. So we got this bright idea that we were gonna, we cut out the picture and that we were going to tape it to the ceiling in your room so that when you lay down to go to sleep, it was up there. And this was hilarious up to the point where we're in the midst of our little thing and we hear her screaming from downstairs. And then when she went to find her and she starts saying, you know, she's just lying here like she's dead. And it was just incredible. She's dead! Santa's dead! <laughs> It was terrible. So then we come down and Andrew's sobbing and then Sarah's sobbing and, and, and the dog was outside. And anyway, but what I, the only other part that I remember later on in the evening was um, you, your 
your mom and you went to take Sinai, I guess, to the emergency veterinarian or whatever. And so at the time you had the car that had the three seats in the back with the seatbelts and whatever. And so all, or this three seats in the front, sorry. And my, <laughs> they put the dog in the back seat. And then my mom was trying to help us, your mom was, your mom was just finishing up in the house. And my mom was trying to help you guys <laughs> into the back seat with like the seatbelts. <laughs> and then your mom comes out and she says, no, 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 no. <laughs> and goes to put you guys to sit in the front seat. And I remember thinking as a child that that was so obvious. <laughs> like at the time I hadn't clued into it until your mom said it. And then I was like, why did my mom try to put you in the back seat with your dead dog? That was, that was what I was thinking. So you and Sarah went, I think, off with your mother to the clinic with her. I did. And then we said goodbye to your grandma Simpson and... That was it. Just every year was different as we, you know, kind of grew up and, and changed uh, personalities and whatnot. So we did something different every year from, from when we were really young playing with Nerf guns to when we're a lot older catching up with what was new in our lives, right? Because we weren't seeing each other all the time. But it's really refreshing um, to be able once a year to get that touch base and get that connection with people uh, that know you at that level. I always say it's because of your mother. She's the glue that holds everyone together. It goes back a long, long ways. And so it was, it, it was very good and it was, um, I always enjoyed it. Oh, my God.